In this video, we're gonna install some fat mat in the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Stay tuned. I started to um, prep the area to install the fat mats or dynamat or any of those kind of sound deadening, sound proofing um, materials to the um, trunk of the Jeep Grand Cherokee. And I started breaking everything apart and then I realized why well, wasn't I making a video of it. So I just threw the pieces here. I'll show you what, what I did in order to get as far as I am and then we'll take it over from there. But this is about uh, deinstalling where the tire goes. All right, so let's take a look. As you can see, I've removed everything from the trunk compartment. This is all pretty easy to do, self-explanatory. You pull the foam off, uh, the tire is screwed in, uh, you unscrew the, the tire, that comes off, and this foam ring here just lays on top there. And then, uh, like I said, I already started to take this apart, and then I just put the pieces back together to kind of show you um, how to go, how to get this far. Um, the first thing is these little hooks. You're going to want to use a screwdriver and carefully just pop up the top of it and the top will pop up like this and it'll expose a screw. You'll unscrew this and do th the same thing to the other side here. I'm just putting them in the bed right now. Anyway, so unscrewing this one, unscrewing this one, I was able to pop this out. Put this stuff that aside. And then there's two screws right here. These are 10 millimeter. Um, so take that one out, take this one out, that loosens up this area. And then there's a, a wire, as you can see right here, and it just plugs in, uh, where did it plug in at? Oh, it plugged in right here, right there. So I unplug that, because uh, this mat is gonna eventually, or this black plastic thing's gonna eventually come up. So unplug that. And then this foam, or this, not foam, this uh, carpeting area here just pops up. So it just has little um, tabs that push into the plastic. So that just pops up. So you can get that out of the way. And now we're on the next part, which is actually unscrewing that. So we get this out of the way. And there's two screws, one here and one over there. So we need to unscrew those and this plastic piece should come right out. So let's get that knocked out. Because I am notorious for losing screws, keep one of these little things handy. And I'll just touch that right there. Yeah, that'll work. And I can screw it. And then that holds on to the screw like that so I don't lose it. Okay, with both those screws out and the two screws here out, this plastic thing will just come right out of there. So I need to use both hands, but I'm going to carefully pick this up and get it out of the Jeep. Safely out of the way, the carpet should be relatively easy to pull out of there. It's just kind of form fitted on, under the tabs, so you just gotta kind of work it out and it should come right out of there. And yeah, it just looks like it's a really good form fitted. So, again, a two hand project, you should be able to lift this carpet right out of there. Or you can just cheat out like I did and just throw it forward like that. It does look like there is some carpet connections here, but I just need it out of the way because this right here is the area I'm gonna be actually putting the mat down and then I'll put the carpet back and all the pieces. So let's grab the dyno mat. In this case I got fat mat and we'll uh, roll that all out. So I went ahead and vacuumed out the entire space and now we're just going to clean it with a little general purpose cleaner. I'm using spray 9 cut 10 to 1 and I'm just going to spray down the area, wipe it dry with a microfiber towel to get it ready for the mat. Okay, looks like we're about done with that. The goal here is really just to prep the area, so I want to make sure there's no loose dirt. If you want to use uh, some sort of alcohol um, on it to get it clean, that's fine. Uh, but I think a little GP, it'll do just fine. Uh, again, we're not trying to, I'm not, I'm not trying to detail this area. I'm just trying to get all the loose dirt so that the mat has a clean surface to stick to. 
I'm going to run the strips along the back side, work my way from the back to the front. My strips need to be about 35 inches long. It can be a little bit longer. Um, and I'll probably take it and make sure that it's at least up around this lip edge. So if we figure, let's see if I can get this over there. We need about, say, six inches by, how long is that again? 35. So about six by 35 to do that back edge. And it will probably be, uh, I could probably go up on this area here for the next strip. This first one, we're just going to try to form fit that back area. And then we'll come up for the next strip on this edge and run it down along that and work our way from the back forward here. Okay, it's about 35 inches long. Now we'll do six inches. Right about there. Get that lifted up. Put the back strip on, and now I just I'm taking the other section of the piece that I cut off. So I cut off one little section here for the back part. I'm taking the rest of it. And I'm just going to lay it out. It still has the backing on it. I'm just kind of pressing it in place, kind of forming it, and then I'll go through and peel up one side of it, and then start rolling it out, and then work my way over to this side. I'm also, because I think I have room, I'm actually overlapping it right here just a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't interfere with the plastic basket when it uh, sets in here in the carpet. Uh, so don't forget about that too. You don't want to make this too thick because the carpet's got to go down and then the plastic basket's got to go back. Okay. What's nice is it is pretty malleable. So it's going in pretty, pretty easy. Now I just gotta flip up this side and then start pulling the paper out of it and rolling more. Also using a microfiber, I'm able to kind of press in those corners, those round areas a little bit easier than trying to roll it out just to make sure it's nice and stuck into place correctly. The roll I have looks like it's about 18 inches wide and from about here to the edge is about 17 and a half inches. So that's actually pretty good. I can do a whole sheet and have it come up the edge here and then just roll it straight down here and then here. And then I just want to cover maybe these areas and then work on this back here. So I can do 18 by, I don't necessarily want to roll it all the way up there. So like by 21. 18 by 21, two 18 by 21 sections should uh, cover this area right here. Just like last time, we're gonna just do a dry fit, make sure it's all, it's all gonna line up as I expect it to. Uh, mold it a little bit. And we can see there's a little gap right here. So I need to make sure I'm covering that. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to start at this end then, then work my way down this way, paying attention to the fact that we have the bolts here. Okay, so let's get that started. Okay, that side's installed. We're going to install this side, and then we can work on the edges, and then finally this back section, and then we'll close up any gaps. Um, maybe even come, come over into this uh, compartment here. Just, uh, just like last time, we're going to dry fit it just like here, and then I'll start from the front and work my way back. Okay, 
So I covered up that. This piece here was probably the hardest to get in because I had to get it under this uh, plastic piece right here. Um, and then there's some little pins that stick through there, oh wait, there, and there. So I'll punch those through. And then I used some scrap pieces and filled in here, there, 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 and a little bit underneath where this cable runs. Um, so now I just have this section back here. Uh, I'll start here and work my way over this way because I'm going to have to, I'm going to leave these clips in place and I'm not going to take them out. Um, so I'm just going to have to run some strips up along that and then I'll, so I'll get up here. Anyway, we'll get this done and then uh, I'll show you how it all looks when I'm finished and then uh, put all this stuff back together. Okay. Okay, here we go. I use a, some little uh, leftover pieces to fill in along the sides here. I did up there. I went ahead and did along the edge right there, here, uh, up along here, inside there, all of this, um, skipping the clips and the latch. So that looks pretty good. Uh, I did use the roller, and like I said, um, I also used a uh, microfiber towel to help kind of slide in and press to get those areas. If I had a huge air pocket like I did here, I'd just slit it to get the air out. <clears throat> this stuff's actually pretty forgiving, so it'll go in pretty well. All right, so let's start putting everything uh, back together. The first thing is we're gonna flip that carpet down and put it back into position, and it just sort of tucks up underneath some of this area here. So let's get that flipped over. Okay, as you can see, the carpet's back in place. Uh, it's got a couple of pins that hold it in position that one and this one right here so just made sure that was there plus the hole for the anchors in so now we'll put the trim basket back in there and then we can start putting this piece and that piece into place okay trays back in place it's got uh, the pins right there and right here if you go into place and then we've got uh, the two screws to put in up there oops two screws so we'll get those put in taking them out you can put them in the same way too so other than getting it stuck to the other metal part you can get the screw started and then hold it with the magnet and then screw it in the rest of the way So when you go to put this back in, you'll notice it has these four clips, and those correspond to here, 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 and here, which I did not cut holes for, but pressing it in, you can see the dimple. So we'll just make a slit to that, open it up so that those clips can pop right in, and then the dyno mat will kind of close around it and help hold that in place as well. Just made slits for it, and then with the blade retracted, I'm just kind of pushing that in there to kind of open it up a little bit. Like that. Okay. Okay, I need to work this trim out. Nine thirty seconds. And we'll just go in there. And then I'll line those up um, and then screw those down. Then this clip just closes like that. It's all back to normal. Uh, this just presses into place here. Uh, these clips have been put in and lined up. And uh, so now I'm just going to start putting all the stuff back in there. Um, starting with the tire ring, which goes right there. And then we'll put the Spare tire in. Uh, it goes the other way. <sighs> okay, well, I'm going to speed through this. And just like that, we're done. Well, sort of. We got to put the mat back in. Then let's take it for a ride. One reason for putting the fat mat or dyno mat or soundproofing mat in the Jeep was uh, to help 
uh, some of the droning I was getting from a recent exhaust system upgrade, and I'll link that video here. Um, so that system kind of drones uh, between 45 and 55 miles an hour when you're just maintaining your speed uh, at about 1500 RPMs. So I'm at 43, there we go, 45, so it's already started to make a little bit more noise now. Uh, it, it's marginally quieter. Um, I think all the noise though is really coming from uh, the resonators right under the driver passenger seat. I don't think it's coming from the rear exhaust system. Anyway, um, that's it for this video. Did it help my situation? Mm, not really, but it's uh, it was a good thing to add anyway. It was something non-intrusive I could do to the Jeep. And who knows, maybe it, maybe it is helping and I just can't tell because of the resonator. Whatever, anyway, that's it for this video. Until the next upgrade, whether it's successful or not, um, I'm Shaker, this is Shaker 242, and I'll see you later.